they're still getting used to that pastor thing. It takes a while to get used to it, but it's really powerful. We had seven sign up. It's God's complete number and perfect number. But in my spirit, I was feeling eight. New beginning. And there was another young man at it. So we thank God for the eight that we'll have today. At least eight. There may be some more. All right. And we've got clothes back there if you need them. You didn't need to bring your own. So we've got, we've got clothes. We're going to be doing some worship while they're doing this too. So. Yeah. And according to Scripture, when John the Baptist baptized Jesus, the Bible says the heavens open. And the Spirit of the Lord descended upon our Lord and Savior in the form of a dove. And I'm just crazy enough today to believe that the Spirit of Heaven can ascend upon here. Yeah. Healings can take place. Right. Chains of bondage can be broken. Yeah. Ankles heal, knees heal, backs heal. In the name of Jesus, be expectant. And we have a great mature group today, so I'm looking for something special to happen. And we have eight, but we could have nine, ten. Yeah. Listen to the Lord. Right. Very good. Thank you, Lord. Those that we have being baptized today have come to Gateway from different paths. They have different backgrounds. And you'll hear some testimonies. Starting off, we have Trish here, and she'll let you know a little bit about why she's in the water today. I got saved when I was 18. It was actually the second time, but I got baptized for the first time then. In a Baptist church <laughs> that was closed, the minister opened it up for me, and my grandma came as my witness. Um, I was raised in the Lutheran church, got saved in a Pentecostal church, got baptized in a Baptist church, and got filled with the Spirit in a Christian bookstore. <laughs> but so much has happened since I was 18 so much um rape violence abortion Jesus. porn alcoholism Jesus. abuse insanity or spirit of insanity to try to take my mind Jesus. suicide attempts and i just want it all behind me like oh, yeah. Like Dave said last week, when they stepped into the River Jordan, all the way back to Adam, I just want to be pure. I want to be holy. I want all that God has for me. I want all of him, and I want him to have all of me. I want to be his fearless warrior, spotless precious on fire yes Lord. in love passionately head over heels in love with my God and his instrument for his purpose all those things you talked about are going to be washed away Father we baptize Trish today in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit by the authority of Jesus Christ. You're a good, good father. To Nick, you are. Nick, come over.
Okay. Then we'll take it. We also have today a husband and wife, Adam and Wendy. And that relationship is just going to go stronger and it's going to be higher yes, by them being Lord. in this together. Let's give them a praise. Give God a hand praise. Yes. You know, marriages need to be strengthened today. Glory. This act of baptism for me and for us represents hope, faith, love, joy, destiny, you, healing, obedience, trust, fulfillment of his promises, new beginnings, a testimony that we are overcomers. Yes. This is a repositioning. Yes. Oh, yeah. And there's much more. But I will say it represents victory because of the life, the death, and the resurrection of our Savior. We're so grateful. Old has passed away, all has become new. Father, we baptize this couple in the name of Jesus. Jesus. And they're going down together. Thank you, Lord. say something real quick about the homes the reason why they're restored and healed is because you have two people that love Jesus more than anything else because they're both transparent both repentive both contrite and humble and have sought help and counsel and because of that we see restoration because they're humble before the Lord because they love Jesus more than their stuff and their stuff is gone and washed away that's why they're a testimony in a ministry that's birthing right here before you a ministry that's birthing right here before you This is uh, Carlos Maldonado. You have anything to say here? Yeah. Uh, so I was baptized when I was 24, and uh, it was great, but I didn't know what to do after that. Um, when I was at 180 Ministries about a year and a half ago, Eric B. back there baptized me in the Holy Spirit. Awesome. Um, but I'm doing this as a rededication and a repositioning because <clears throat> uh you know uh, uh not too long ago I, I added to my testimony uh, again some but i'm done adding darkness to my testimony from now on it's light and that's what i'm doing yeah. so uh carlos just uh watched you the past few weeks and just what the lord's doing in your life man it's uh that old is gone that old is gone, and he's birthing something new in you. And uh, I just can't wait to see that ministry that he's called you to because you're called to greatness. And so we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come 
baptize all of us. Now we have Brother Luther. And what I see special about this is uh, not, not only is he a godly man, but he has two sons, two adult sons today being baptized alongside with him. Yeah. And what does that say about his family and God's family? Jesus. Praise the Lord. Who Luther, do you have anything to say today? This is a rededication, a repositioning that I think I needed for a long time. Um, I was baptized once, once, the first time, this will be the second time, when I was 12 years old. There's a lot of doctrinal things that I went through, a lot of old man, spiritual, um, religious type of spirits that I really want to just lay down and just say, that's all under the blood. That's all under the, that's washed away. But also, I, I was standing there thinking, you know, this is a, also a generational thing that the, the moms and dads, the sons and daughters that are out there, and they want something broke. If you've been baptized before, get after it. I challenge you, Come. Go change your clothes. Get down here. This is a this is a time and a position to where you need to be changed for your family's sake. Put yourself in perspective of where you are and where they need to be. And this is just one addition. It's awesome that I found out my boys were gonna be this is one we didn't sit around and talk about it. I'm gonna do it. Oh, I'm gonna do it too. Well no, they, they all called in on their own. So this is awesome. Wow. So that's it. Yeah. Let me let me just say this. If, you, if the Lord just picked your heart, you might want to respond to that. I would exhort you very strongly for your families. If the Lord pricked you and pricked your heart for that, be obedient to do what he said. Very good. Wow, that was powerful, brother. Yeah. We baptize Luther today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Next, we have Lance. Have anything you'd like to say? Yeah. Uh, I also have some things I'd like to show. Terry could put those up on the screen. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, this is me, obviously, getting baptized for the first time. But it's also Pastor Dave doing the baptism. Look at that at hair. There's three photos of me getting in, me standing there, and me getting dunked. So I consider it an honor for him to be doing this again. And this is a uh, public testimony to a new place in my life that I'm going and that nothing of my old life is coming with me. So I'm going into the grave and dying and rising again as a new man. So be it. Yeah, I remember those days and back then. And here's this wild Shipley family, man. They are like, there's just something about these Shipleys that we loved. And this, they had to see, boy, that was a lot of years ago. That was tw over 20 That's years ago. That's when you had ago. lots of hair. In I had lots of hair and it was brown. <laughs> so today, but this is the, what's really cool, what I saw, Lance, is when you're, I heard your mom say it first. She said, Lance said, I want, I'm all in. I'm putting aside everything. I want everything that God has for me. He is going to honor that, brother. He is going to honor that in a way that you've never known before. So now you are going to walk in a new anointing as you've never walked in before. Amen. Amen. I'll jump it out this way.
Father, right now, we take this great man of God and we baptize him now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. in the word of God the Lord has signs and wonders and miracles in the life of a kingdom person to record as Luke did in the book of Acts there's many acts that will be coming your way acts of my spirit acts of the supernatural acts of financial blessings acts of job placement acts of people healed acts of people being saved acts 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 as the namesake you were named inspired through your mother and dad through the spirit of god for such a time as this you will be recording and seeing and living in the book of acts says god The other brother here is Luke, and he has words as well. So I have, I remember that time when you baptized us when we were kids. And uh, I remember that since I was a kid. And I don't know if any of the, my pictures came in, but um, I think that day we also got these little certificates, birth certificates. And it, it, it was a, a spiritual birth certificate. And so I have a date and a time when I was so privileged be a part of that with you guys and I've cherished that and I wanted to take the opportunity to uh, get rebaptized today as a new beginning in my life um, and the new things that we're doing and uh, I had a couple other pictures to share um, it might be a, a little bit funny but not necessarily had to do with the, uh, the baptism but Lord I, I, I just thank you for this opportunity that you've given me to be a part of this church to, to have a new beginning with the same people where that gave me my beginning in my relationship with you. And I just thank you for that opportunity and thank you for this new beginning. In Jesus' name. Well, uh, you know, uh, Luke, you have turned out to be such a great man. I mean, I think about your mom and dad and all the things that they had gone through and the greatness of you, you Luke, your sister. All of you guys, you married such a precious, precious wife. But you, brother, you too have been an amazing, amazing man of God in all the unique ways. And we haven't seen a lot of those for years, and we haven't seen you for years. But we knew God had so much greatness for you. And I guess he just got done talking about it some more too, didn't he, what he was going to do in the future. So it's an honor to be a part of what God's doing. So look, right now, we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. for Luke. Luke, when you got in there, the Lord was telling me that you and your brother both 
but especially you, are going to be carrying on the legacy that your parents have started in you. And that it'll go on for generations to come. Uh, Jerry has a word for these two. He's got another one. <laughs> So this is what I, I saw for you, Joshua and Stephen, right? Yes. So I saw that you two carry the anointing like James and John in the word. Like in the, uh, they were called and known as sons of thunder. And so I saw you when you guys went down, you came up a completely different mantle. I saw, I see a completely different mantle that God is putting on you. Um, he's taking off the old mantle, but he's putting on a new mantle for you and I see um, it being the sons of thunder and I also see that when you guys come up that um, there's breakthrough there's breakthrough in the things that you are wanting and in the Lord that you've been believing God for and as you come up the I hear so this is what this is what the breakthrough is is the thunder from heaven is coming down and it's breaking through for you guys and this is not only are you gonna is this not only for but it's for here and, and now, in the future, and that you're carrying thunder now. And then the thunder in the spirit, that where you guys go, there's a, there's a thunder, there's a rumbling, and you guys are going to break demonic strongholds because of the thunder that you guys carry. Yeah. And God is actually calling you. He's, he's going to call you to specific places because there's places that he yeah. wants you to go and the thunder that you guys carry are going to break open the demonic and then and it's going to cause wow. things to flee. Wow. The enemy is going to flee because of the sound of the thunder that you carry in you. And so that's what I saw when you guys came out of the wow. water. That's pretty cool. You know, I, I just noticed this uh, on Stephen. Uh, he's got it tat on here, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. And that's a, you remember what you're, the word before earlier, yeah. what the Lord was going to do to prosper? You guys, wow, this is going to be wild. We look forward to hearing the stories. We look forward to seeing you guys. We look forward to seeing what the greatness of what God's going to do through you two. So you guys begin to dream as you've never dreamed. You begin to see what God has for you. And don't doubt it. And don't let anybody try and influence you otherwise. You got it? You do what God says to do. And it's going to go far beyond your ability. It'll go far beyond you. And what God has shown you is going to be powerful. But he hasn't even shown you the whole package yet. Because you couldn't handle it, you know? But it's going to be very powerful what the Lord's going to do. Very good. And what I see is that you're both men of action. You know, you didn't sign up. You, we talked about baptism, and here you are. Ready to get in and get it done. Praise God, and that's great. Obey that still, small voice whenever you sense it. Now, I won't hold it against you, but I, I think one of you has, has my hair. But. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll go ahead. <laughs> Which one? Which one? I, I know it. I remember I used to have the hair look like that too, brother. <laughs> In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we baptize Stephen. Amen. I just want to say, God isn't really a comedian. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but also, once you know him, once you once you make the choice to be with him, you're stuck with him. There's there's a, there's no going back. He he's he's not gonna let go of you, and he'll he'll never let you run away. So, no matter where you go, no matter how far you think you can go, um, don't ever give up on yourself or on him because he never has and never will. That's right. And uh, really, I'm doing this just because I've, you know, I look at everything kind of like a car, you know, and he's just, he's in the passenger seat, you know, wants you to surpass everything that you know, you're going through and stuff. And, you know, you're just stuck in the same gear, but I'm ready to change gears. So that's, that's it. <laughs> we baptize Joshua 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Restoration, redemption, healing, deliverance, chains coming off. Is there anybody else? It's not too late. You can run and get dressed. There's one more. Oh, there's another one. Look at this guy. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Kathy, Sapel's birthday is today. Oh, his mama's. Whoa, she would. She's looking down on this brother. You know that, don't you? Huh? She's down. She's looking on from that great cloud of witnesses. Ooh, this is really, really important. This is like really important. All right. So even before I knew you were going to get baptized, he dropped this word in me. So. Look, I, I, yeah, he, said, he said, this is serious, man. He said he's not playing. Joe, your name means God shall increase. God shall add. Wow. God shall increase blessing on you. Abundant blessing. And he has. Jesus. But here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing. He said, you got to get all the way in or all the way out, Joe. All the way in or all the way out. Because this is it. This is the day of reckoning for you. This is it right now, okay? I know it's not a fluffy word, but listen, this is what he's saying to you. All the way in today, he's got your back. The enemy is, so here's what he showed me. He said that he's been knocking at the door of your heart. He's been standing and waiting and waiting. He's been pursuing you, Joe. He's been, he's been, he's hot after you. And he has been for years. And he's been standing and he's been waiting. But there's been another one that's been trying to pursue and trying to take you down. There's been another one. That's, so it's up to you. It's up to you, Joe. I mean, he's got your back. Jesus. He's opened up doors. He's provided for you. He's protected you. He saved your life, Joe. Many times. That's right. Many times, Joe. He loves you so much, bro. Thank you, Jesus. So today's it, man, okay? We're all behind you. All the hosts are behind you. Heaven is cheering you on right now. Heaven is cheering you on right now, bro. Joe, your mommy was always proud of you. She always loved you and always will. And your heavenly father, likewise, always. Always believed in you too, brother, when even you didn't believe in yourself. It's a glorious thing. We have a word over here for him. Also, body of Christ. You know, this isn't just a baptism. God is shifting things. This is holy. God takes time with people. He's not in a hurry. But we need to be praying in the spirit on this one. As he's being baptized, start praying in the spirit. If you don't have your prayer language, then just say, Lord, get him. Lord, get him. Holy Ghost, get him. He's going to be set free totally. He's coming forth as the man of God. That he has who he is. It's who he is. He's gifted. He's talented. And Nicole has a word. Joe, I believe I heard the Lord say that it's time for you to forgive yourself for anything that you think was unfinished with your mom before she left earth. You may think that because you had some brokenness when she, when she went to heaven, that you can't forgive it because you think she didn't see you whole. But your mom saw you whole. She saw you the way that God sees you. And it's time to let go of what you think she saw. And it's time to forgive yourself. 
and see yourself the way that she saw you and the way that God sees you. Good word, good word. Hey, brother. Um, brother, I just see that God is saying that he's going to put his dwelling place around you. Leviticus 29, 13. And he says that Ephesians 4, 30, do not grieve the Holy Spirit with whom you're going to seal today. You're going to be sealed under the Holy Spirit covering. And the Lord says that I will be with you. And the Lord says, James 4, 6, I will give you more grace to overcome every temptation. So God says, I want your partnership. I want you to join your hands with me. That's what the Lord says. God bless you. Good word. Where you been? <laughs> Very good. Very good. Um, And Joe, um, I just saw that um, as they as they baptize you, um, that Jesus is the one that is doing it. And I saw him gather you in his arms, and he was just like, "Oh, my precious boy, my precious boy, I've been waiting for this moment." And he said that it's going to be a twofold: is that I see him um, tearing down programming that has been in your mind for such a long time of how, you've, how you have seen yourself. And I saw him gather the pieces of your heart and it was like as he went he went down with you, you came up and he was just restoring you with a new heart but also a whole new way of looking at the world around you. And he's saying he's given you new sets of spiritual eyes and I see your precious mama and from the time that she went home to be with Jesus. I've seen her just confess and speak over your life that you're going to fulfill the destiny and that her legacy did not die with her, but you are to continue in the giftings and legacy because it's in your generational line. And he said it's going to be a shift that the programming is gone and where the enemy has come in and he's trying to shift that you're even gonna see yourself differently but to come out knowing that this is a new beginning and a new birth in your heart and in your spirit because the fact that of all weekends you happen to be here, the weekend that we were doing the baptism is God saying, I have not forgotten about you. Hey, Joe. Um, so I saw a door and I saw it sealed shut with cement. And I asked the Lord what that is. And he said, that's the door to your past. So right now, I decree, as he goes down in that water, that the, the door of the past is cemented closed, and it can never, ever be opened again in Jesus' name. Woo! The part that Joseph didn't say about the papa is he's been waiting with his arms wide open. Abba Father has been waiting for his son to come. Love's response is to wait for the heart choice. And the arms have always been open wide to receive, not repel. Receive. Yeah. This is your day. Way to go, Joe. Any man being Christ is a new creature. Joe, you take those new ears, listen to that new word, and let it sink down into a new heart. Take those new eyes and just look out among us here. See the love and the support that you have. And not only is this for Joe, but for all of us. You know, it's just as important staying saved as it is to get saved. Let's do all those things, and you as well, Joe, all those things that we need to do to stay in the race. And that's run to win. Amen. Father, we baptize Joe in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Every 
chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Let's all stand to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. That's right. That's this right. This is family. That's right. Right here. That's God's right. God's given us lots of family. Amen. He adds. He adds. He adds. That's right. He adds. Don. This is family. That's right. You know, Pastor Dee Dee started out today with repentance. And last Saturday, I was talking to my daughter. And she was saying, she was talking about her ex-husband. And she was saying that, um talking about almost like they're going to get back together. And my mom's heart just cried, no, whoa, 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 slow down, you know. And remember what we went through and things like that. And last Sunday morning on my way here to church, God just really convicted me coming up on the mountain. And he said to me, what if I'm restoring that marriage? And so I called my daughter on the way here. And I said, Marilyn, I have to ask you a question. I want you to be honest with me. Are you praying for a miracle in your marriage? And she said, yes, I am, Mom. And I said, I ask for your forgiveness. And I said, I will stand with you. And I will begin to pray for your marriage. And God reminded me about Numbers 14, 28. It says, as surely as I, the Lord God, lives, you shall have the very things I hear you say. And I was cursing his son while trying to protect my daughter. Do, do I think that I'm more than God, that I know more than God? Whoa. I mean, God just really gave me an awakening. And then Sunday morning here, I just began to go into interceding. And when I went down, I saw holy fire, lightning. It was like lightning, and I was scared. I was just back, and I kept saying, oh, God, it's too holy. I'm scared. Um, it's holy. And it is his work and what he wants to do in families. Lord God, he is all about families and restoration. And if you have ones that have gone astray and are, are going other directions, that's what you see in the, in the physical is not what God sees in the spirit. And he reminded me that Roman is his son. He's his son, and he doesn't have a mother to pray for him. And so I am supposed to pray. 
I'm supposed to stand in the gap for my family, my children, and my grandchildren. And my grandchildren want their family together. They want their daddy and mommy together. And Jesus. we cannot we cannot go back and say one thing and say we believe in God and what he's what can he restore? If he can restore me, he can restore that marriage. Amen. Who else is in agreement with that? Very good. I guess we're Pray, Father God, right now over marriages and family restoration, yes, Lord God. Jesus. I just ask that you would begin to unite back together and that the secrets, the secret things will begin to come to light, Lord God, and you would you would just unite families back together in the by, by the name of Jesus. Amen. Good Thank you. I just love this. Don't you just I love this. This is the book of Acts. Church, where they get together, one has a hymn, one has a spiritual song, one has a teaching, one has... This is the body of Christ. Let's all stand. We're going to give him praise for what he has done. We're going to worship. Amen? And one thing that the Lord just showed me is that he's dealing with an orphan spirit right now. And those who don't feel, even though you're part of a family or you are have a family, um, but you still have this emptiness inside of you saying, I don't know if I belong here. I don't know, do I really belong here? Do I belong in this place? And the Lord says, yes, you do belong there. You do belong where you're at. And he's dealing with that orphan, I'm not good enough, I'm, but that Feeling that's and that where the enemy has attacked you in that area, the Lord is healing you in that area right now. And so, just let Him heal you. Let Him touch you. Let Him bring just just to that His voice saying, "I accept you." That's what I hear the Lord saying over you right now: "Is I accept you for who you are." It's not you don't have to perform for me. He says, "You don't have to try hard. You don't have to strive for me." He says, "Because I already love you enough." That no, there's nothing you can do. I hear the Lord saying this even now, that there's nothing you can do that will make me love you anymore because my love for you knows no bounds. I love you enough as it is. Like, I love you. Like, I don't, I love you. You can't make me love you any less. And you can't make me love you anymore. I just love you. I, my love for you is so strong. And it even says it in Song of Solomon chapter 8. It says, my love for you is stronger than the grave. My love for you is stronger than death. That I love you. I love you. And so he just says, I accept you for who you are. You are mine. You are mine. You belong to me. You belong in my house. You belong in my room. There's room for you. There's always room for you, he says.
Lord brought something to me about the marriages. And this is an awesome, awesome presence of the Lord in here right now. Family, husbands, wives, I just want to encourage you to stick together in Jesus. The Lord brought the word to me about manipulation. Do not let manipulation come into your relationships. We have to have God's love in the middle of us. No manipulation of any sort in your marriage. Ask the Lord to help you to stick together with him in the center. No manipulation. You don't have to have that to stay with each other. God's love encircling you, keeping you. His love is like the glue in you. God's love the center of your marriage. If you're here and your husband or wife are here, grab their hands. If not, grab both hands and, and stand in proxy for them. Oh! 
that in all the earth. Oh, Lord, we shout your praise. Let's build in that. Boom.
to stand in the Lord. Heaven is coming to earth. And it's time to surprise. It's time to surprise hell. Like before. Like before. First it was Jesus. And now it's the bride's turn to storm hell.
worship you. You are high and lifted up. Hallelujah. Let's lift our arms to the Lord. Holy. Oh, you are holy, God. Let's pull up that piano. Robin in the house. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
who may climb the mountain of the Lord who may stand in his holy place only those whose hands and hearts are pure only those whose hands and hearts are pure who do not worship idols and never tell lies they receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God the Savior such people may seek you and worship in your presence open up ancient gates open up Over cities, over nations, tribes, and tongues. He's roaring over families, over cities, nations, and tongues. No one can escape him. No one will escape him. He roars. He roars. He roars. Righteous justice. Righteous justice. Righteous justice is in his roar. It's in his roar. It's in his roar. It's in his roar. Righteous justice. Righteous justice. Righteous justice. 
righteous justice is in his roar. It's 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 in his roar. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. No more separation. No more separation. No more separation between heaven and earth. No more separation. No more separation. No more separation between heaven and earth. The king is in the field. The king is in the field. The king is in the field. Won't you come and join him? The king is in the field. The king is in the field. The king is in the field. Oh, won't you come and join him? Oh, won't you come and join yeah. him? As you're worshiping the Lord, I will do it very quickly. I see Jesus' hand building up the fence outside this car, and I see angels standing, and he's build, he building up this fence. And he told me to tell you guys that he's building a fence, and he's taking out, he's removing some people, he's giving a new people, he's protecting this church. Isaiah 27, 3 is the eye of the Lord who protected and guarded and watered it day and night so that no one can harm it. So the Lord, the Lord says to me, I tell you, Didi, that get ready. He's going to take you to the tour of heaven. He's going to take you every place you've been seeking that. The Lord says, I am taking you, my daughter. Get ready. And the Lord yeah, yes. So that's what the Lord is telling me. And the Lord is telling me for this church, you know, the word of the Lord is so powerful. As I was walking out from my apartment, I would say, God, I would love this song, Break Every Chain. Would you please have them sing this song? And then he said, it's done. I will put that song in their hearts. Why I'm sharing this is whatever we ask in the name of the Lord, John 14, 14, God will give that. And the Lord also tells me to the people, Proverbs 16, 7, my dear children, if your ways are pleasing to me, even I make your enemies friends to you. It's going to turn their hearts. The Lord says, this is a time and season, my children. Isaiah 43, 13. As I am he from the ancient times, no one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who is going to reverse it? I am saying to you, when I act, who is going to reverse you in your life? The Lord says, my dear children, Pastor Dave and T.D., I am the one who called you. And I will establish your ministry, says the Lord. This is a time, my children, of gateway. Walk in the supernatural. Walk in the supernatural. The Lord said, I am moving. You will see the great wonders that I'm going to show. The Lord says, you have just seen the part of it. The Lord says, the coming days, the Lord says, I am the Lord who walks before you. And I will be with you. I will never leave you, forsake you. Then I see during the worship, the Lord wants you, whoever have the stomach problems with the, you know, like dairy problem, like when you eat the dairy products, you have a problem, or maybe you have a like, you know, gluten problem, the Lord wants to heal right now. God wants to heal right now. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, every discomfort in the stomach, Lord, every Lord, everything which is problematic when they eat certain kind of food, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Father, we praise you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So I heard the Lord saying as we were singing this last song, this is my Pentecostal outpouring. This is the week of Pentecost. And, and you must set yourself in a position of reception. 
You must align your heart, align your house, align your mind, align your work, align everything about you so that you are in a posture that you might receive what he wishes to outpour into you. If you do not set yourself into that posture, he cannot pour into you. So he says, my body, my people, my bride, please open up so that I might pour into you. I have new giftings, new relationships, new blessings. New is pouring out this week. If you will receive new, you will have new. But you must receive new. So set yourself in a posture so that you might receive the new this week. Good. So, Lord, right now, we are setting even now, right now, as an act of obedience to what you're saying, even the things that you're doing in us. We set ourselves ready to receive what you have for us in this hour. For, Lord, you have been speaking things to some of us that have just, we have said no to. And it has caused us great heartache. Lord, I ask that you would just even now begin to restore a place of trust that we have never known before, restore to us. Lord, all those things that pertain to life and godliness in a way that we have never seen before. We, Lord, repent for the things, our actions in those times past where we have not been obedient to do what you said to do. And we have ran for what you called us to do. And we've walked from the, away from the simple things, the things that you have said to do. And we have not been faithful in the little. Therefore, Lord, you are unable to bring us and bless us in the much. So, Lord, in this hour, we ask that you would forgive us. And we say, Lord, whatever you would say or whatever you would have us to do, we will do. And readying us for this new that you are establishing. For in Pentecost, everything changed in your power and your might came. When your glory comes, everything changes. So, Lord, let your glory move in a way that we have never seen. Come flow in our hearts, even those that, Lord, are being healed right now. We thank you for the healings you've already done. We thank you for manifesting your presence in a way, Lord, as the great healer. Some in broken hearts. Some have their hearts so broken they haven't been able to trust you, Lord. Lord, as each one steps out into a place of trust, out into the waters. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing right now. The miracles you're doing right now in each one's life. For each and every one that is here, those that are watching my live stream, the things, that, Lord, that you're doing right now in each one of them, there's a stirring in the bellies there's a stirring even now. For you are awakening things in us, Lord, that have been there and appointed for this time and this hour that you have for these things to be awakened in us to fulfill the very will that you have for your glory. Heaven's mercy seat. Your mercy and your kindness and your love, Lord. Release your presence even now, Lord, to come. And show yourself mightily to each one. As they step, as we step in to the new. Always knowing that your mercy see and your mercies are new every morning. Thank you, Lord. You've given us your abundant grace, Lord, to accomplish everything that we would be successful in everything we set our hand to. Your abundant grace gives us the ability to overcome and fulfill what you've called us to do. We thank you now, Lord, for what you're doing. As you open up the heavens and show yourself my love. can leave when you want to. We're just going to keep singing here for a little bit. Ooh, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Son, heaven's mercy seat, holy, 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 
Thank you, Lord. You know, I was, uh, I was just thinking about what it looked like on Pentecost. And all these bodies laying around when the Lord began to move. Like it looks around here often. All these bodies laying around. Hey, um, David, David uh, McDaniels had a word. Just if you would just hold on. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, worship team. It's been a unique day. 
Did I not say when you repent that I cast your sins as far as the east is from the west? You would just hold there, right there where you're at, if you would, everybody. Just, just hold there just for a moment. I, I believe when the Lord speaks, we should probably just honor him. What would you do if he was speaking right now? But I also said, as far as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is my mercy toward you who fear me. My word declares in Isaiah 38, 17, indeed, it was for my own peace that I had great bitterness. But you, Lord, have lovingly delivered my soul from the pit of corruption. For you, Lord, have cast all my sins behind your back. Behind my back means your past is buried forever. Some of you really need to hear this. Those of you that are watching, we still have live stream on or is it kicked off? Okay, good. Yesterday I I saw, I saw your shortcomings, your failures, your inadequacies, your character faults and your lack. But today this is what I see, says the Lord. I see my sons and daughters as complete, whole, forgiven Delivered, perfect, full of joy, anointing, gladness, hope, and full of my persona, identity. A great work has occurred that has washed away the reproach of yesterday. It is all gone. You cannot re- retrieve it, although the memory of it is like a scar. But I have scars too, says the Lord. These scars are forever reminders of victory as they remind you from the place from which you have come. These scars are also barriers. They are seals of my grace. And no longer will you be able to revisit them. The past is something you say, but today you see what I see, the present future of who you are and what you are becoming. You have crossed over into your identity this day says the Lord. How many of you received that? How many of you see that? Very good. Some of you didn't raise your hand. Hey, your neighbor didn't raise his hand. Raise his hand for him, will you? That's a good word. Very good. All right. Um, boy, Pentecost you know... Pentecost is next Sunday. What's that? Pentecost. Oh, it is. Very yes. good. Very good. You know, I had this really awesome message. It was a dandy. It was, But until too. next time... <laughs>